What's the one place you can go and get five diverse opinions on one topic? Another One Podcast. New episodes every Monday morning. Available on all major podcast platforms. Another it's on. If you know, you it's know. Rich it's Rich B's. It's Deja RBZ. It's Kalia. Another one. Hello, it's Kaya. One. It's your boy, Trey B. Cars, a.k.a. Trey. 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 Another one. Another one. Another one. Hello and welcome to another episode of Another One. Oh, you was about to sing. I'm Brock bringing this in nice and nice and tight and right on this episode. Okay, this, sound like somebody's welcome. excited. Welcome to your first episode, Trey Because <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna play me like I'm in all the other three episodes. I know y'all heard me. Okay. I know the ladies heard me. That's all that matters. So just for oh, reference boy. sake, Trey say who's just in the last three episodes while I've been in the past 200 and however many weeks. Oh, my have. gosh. We're really about to do this? All right. See, and you know what? This is what it's like working with family. We're going to get into it because this is the last episode of our How to Build a Family Business series. Series. La finale. La finale. <laughs> That's not even. A, I don't, is that a thing? Anyway, <laughs> we'll get into it after the break. Okay, you have been putting it off, but no longer can you do that. You have got to get this website. You have clients who are looking for you. You have information that you need to put out there. You have a product that you're trying to sell. But you have nowhere to put these people. You know, Instagram sometimes can be funny. Facebook goes in and out. So why not have a platform, your own website that people can go to and get in contact with you to purchase your product, to find out what you have available for them at any time? What are you waiting for? Connect with Dynamic Works so that they can design a site for you and your brand that will speak when you are asleep. You heard me. <laughs> so trust them, reach out to them, connect with them so that they can design a website that will support what you are doing. DynamicWorks.com. Okay, so what is it really like? Working with family. It's Headaches. Like, that's what I was about to say. It's like having a headache and I don't know what the I'm trying to think of the good the good part to have. I'm trying <laughs> like, to you think know, of the good like part. The, like the sweet and sour. I don't you agree. Know, the, um, sweet and salty. I don't agree. You know what it's kind of like? After you've been chewing extra minty gum all day and then you drink some really cold water. That's exactly what it's like. What do you think? I don't know so much about that. It's more like brushing your teeth with like a nice minty toothpaste and then eating a donut. It just kind of doesn't go together. No, <laughs> no. Brush your teeth, brush your teeth, and then drinking orange juice. Ew. It's like they're pretty good separate, but then when you bring them together, <laughs> no, no. <stop. laughs> no. Wow. I wouldn't say working with family is a headache because I mean, generally, I don't just get headaches over situations. I don't know. That's not really it for me, but. I will say that it can be, it's not for the faint heart, the faint of heart. It doesn't make okay. it, I mean, I'm not going to say it doesn't make it any better, but also when you live with them, then it's definitely like. Right, because it would be different if, you know, you have your argument about what the advertisement should be like and how it's working and who said they was going to do what. And then you can, you know, just close your laptop and just breathe for a second. But no, it's like, all right, what are we eating for dinner after the meat? No, <laughs> so I, it's like, I think it's better that you live together because, you know, some people, they would just be like, OK, well, I, well, then I'm just not going to do this right now. And then they just leave and then you never come to a conclusion and this stuff just ain't getting done. And then they're not answering your calls and X, Y, Z. And that's an issue. But since you're right here, it's like, where you going to go? Let's handle this. <laughs> I trying to go take a nap, but it's like we got work to do. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like a lot of people have a lot to say on this episode. Here we go. This is gonna I be mean, fun. I so don't necessarily think it's negative 
I no. don't think it it, it is just a positive thing. Honest. Yeah, I just think that these are just aspects of working with family. Well, you know, a lot of um, let's say music groups, right? Who are all from different people, right? The different members of a music group. They actually move them into one house while they're trying to create their music and stuff, right? So they that way they can gel together and they can build together and they can be on the same vibe, right? That makes their music better. Yeah. You know? Definitely. I mean, and I I personally think that working with family is a great thing. Can it be stressful? Definitely. But when you put all of the different you know attitudes and the different you know um um benefits of people's personalities together and swish them around and what should come out is a great family business because that way you have all of the different parts that you need you know why look elsewhere why 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 i mean if you have capable people you know I think I think but the biggest thing is, you know, when it comes with the family business is you have to know the parts. You know what I mean? Like you have to know what part each person plays. Because everybody has their strengths. And if you play the team at their strengths, then you'll have a you know, I think you can have a very, very strong family business. And Definitely. that's from episode two. That's like a team in this series. It's like when you trying to when you got the the field the person that the kicker going in at um center, it's just like it just doesn't add up. <laughs> so you mean, gotta use the strength and put them back at kicker. Right. I mean but but work with analogy. family especially if you have a um like kids in the family business you are know, younger family not kids but younger family so so like if you have you know an 18 year old you have a you know a 30 year old you have a you know a 45 year old and you have like a 25 year old like all of those different ages will contribute differently right and they also have a different mode of thinking which can help out when you're looking at marketing it can help out when you're looking at you know how to attack a different problem because some people will think in a box some people will be thinking outside of the box and so if you are able to navigate through that and not take the conversation personally then i feel like it can definitely be beneficial yeah but you also have to know when to separate between the personal and the business right you I don't even know. I'm trying to think. Of no, that's a, yeah, that's no, a good example. Right. I'm trying to think of an, an analogy. Yeah, that I can go ahead and throw, bring throw one in yeah. so that you don't use any more sports analogies. Um, <laughs> What's it gonna be for in? instance, separating personal and business. You don't want to be like, okay, well, I don't feel like washing the dishes. Okay, well, I'm not gonna wash the dishes either. And so y'all mad about the dishes. And then the next time y'all talking about a website and who needs to make the banner, you like, well, you, you didn't, didn't do the, the dishes, dishes. so. You got to do this banner. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Not if you're better at making banners. Like, you just have to learn when, what's a good time for what. And that's just a scenario for, like, if you're living together. But, like, if you live apart and you're just harboring other personal feelings, like, you didn't come to my event the other day. And so now I'm not going to deliver on these graphics. That doesn't make any sense because you have clients. And no matter what personal problems you have going on you have to deliver to the client because right. they paid or they're right. paying and they deserve quality work because they didn't do nothing to you right or a quality service exactly i mean i think i think that a lot of people when it comes with a family they can't separate that they can't separate personal and, and, and business you know it, it's it's all one that's what they want to say they want to say it's one like it, because we're a family and so our business is still a family well that's not true like when you have a business the business is a business and you have to run it as such and so if you have someone that's over a certain thing then that's what they're over and if they're making a decision in that thing then that has nothing to do with your family um, um, uh, level of uh, order 
Hierarchy. Hi- hierarchy. That's the word I'm looking for, right? That has nothing to do with your family hierarchy because the person that can be in charge and everybody, you know, um, voted the person in or whatever, or maybe they didn't vote them in. Maybe they're just the person who started the business. You know, they may be the person in charge of the business, but in the hierarchy of the family, they may be one of the children or they may be, you know, um, somebody who doesn't really even rank on the family meter. When I say rank, I'm talking about like, you know, in the form of mother, dad, you know, cousins, all that kind of stuff, right? They might not be the person that's in charge of anything, but they're the person in charge of the business. So you have to let them play that role, you know, gotcha. and be okay with it because that's their role. Yeah. Good. Yes. Exactly right. And then like, like I said, it's all about somebody else is paying for it. You know, somebody else is paying for that business. They're not paying for your personal. They're, they're not paying for for your personal problems to be all all up in the business. You know, up in their graphic. They don't want your your family business in their graphic. That also takes it back <laughs> to professionalism, like we talked about. It's like you somebody trying to be like, hey, hey, like that somebody calls you, calls a business, and it's like, hey, um, yes, yeah, so what's happening with my graphic? It's like, yeah, I just got out of an argument with my sister. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure that out, and it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> How's my graphic coming? Like, right. That's all I care about. Right. I mean, you know, people. <laughs> that's crazy, yo. You got me laughing on that one, man. You almost got me stuck. Like, but. People uh, literally want to um, hold someone accountable, you know, for their personal business. I, I don't understand that it, within a within a family business like that. Just just keep 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 it separate in your brain. That that's really how you have to do it. In your brain, you have to keep it separate. And another thing that I think is important when you're working with family is um, the dynamic of respect. And the dynamic of, I mean, I know that we're saying that you have to separate personal and business, but in doing that, you still have to be able to respect each other and respect each other's opinion and respect the responsibility or the role that that person is playing. And it's like, if, if you're, if you know that someone is, we'll use dynamic works for an example. If I know that Kalia is the graphic designer and I, um, am over, marketing then we both have to respect the roles that we play and then respect the fact that you know what you're doing which is why you're doing it and I know what I'm doing which is why I'm doing it and even though I may have some familiarity with graphic design or she may have some familiarity with marketing just ensuring that whatever suggestions or whatever tips or whatever may be shared and given, you know, is given from a place of love and not, you know, condescending or, or, or you trying to act like, you know, more than somebody else or, you know, whatever the case may be, because those little things can cause rifts or can cause frustrations or can make it a challenge to work with one another. Hostile environment. It does yeah. make a yes. hostile environment. And, and there's no HR. And, you know, you, you have to work through those things. And I'm going to be honest because, you know, that's what we do on the podcast. I can think of several times where, you know, as a group of five people, there's a lot of personalities here and there's a lot of strong personalities. And sometimes that can create um, tense moments. And even in these meetings that we have on Mondays and Fridays, you know, okay, it sounds good for us to say on the podcast that we have these meetings, but what do those meetings really look like? You know what I'm saying? And how do you work through the meeting um, when you're ready for the meeting to be over and, you know, somebody else is bringing up something else or somebody else is making jokes about something and you're just ready to, to, to do whatever it is that you may have been tasked to do. So that's the reality of working with family because everybody has a different personality and everybody's bringing something different to the table. And I know like sometimes I might be quiet and, you know, I might not want to be bothered because honestly, I come from a structured work environment. I'm used to being in um, a corporate setting. So the free 
the the willy nilly or the free type setting that we have here, it, it kind of takes some adjustment because I'm used to having an agenda when you go to a meeting. So you come in and you cover X, Y, Z, da 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 da, and then the meeting's over. You know what I'm saying? So we all have our nuances that we have to work through and we have to be mindful of. And it's the same with any family dynamic. Everybody has their own little thing. They have their pet peeves. They have their, you know, their own little idiosyncrasies. Yes, exactly. So I've got a question. How, you know, you guys specifically, how do you distinguish between when you need to keep trying to work with family or like when it's just like not going to work? Oh, that's a good question. Because like when, because I know there's times where it's like, you know, things are hard, but if you keep pushing, you can get past it. When do you stop? Like, when is it just not going to work? I feel like that's even a good question for just life. Hmm. (laughs) That's a fact. I mean, honestly, I feel like when you can't separate personal and business. Like, if you continue not to be able to separate personal and business, like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to work when I feel like it. You know what I mean? Because it's, there's, there's no, I don't care. Like, I mean, it's a family business. Some people... When you have a family business, some people in the family may treat it like a hobby and not like a business, you know. And so if you continuously, you know, like you come when you want to the meetings or you don't come or, you know, you try to say that you have, you know, well, I was doing this, you know, I was doing this and this and this other thing needs to get done. And this, if this is a continuous um, form of uh, uh, something that, that continues to happen, then at that point something's gonna have to change it's either something's got to change or or somebody's going to be out overall hindering the growth of the company or the business right because you can't you when someone is paying for a service like that's that's the thing when someone's paying for a service or a product that you are putting out there that that your family does this then you you can't mess up your name all because one person wants to oversleep or one person wants to, you know, they don't want to work. They'd rather just do something else. You know what I mean? Because it's not that type of party. If you're not making no money in that business, then everybody going? suffers. Right. Especially if it's a family business, that means everybody's putting their all into it. Right. And if everybody's putting their all into it and this is your mode of income, then literally you can wipe your whole family off the map for one person not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Right, because while it is a, a business that you're, you've created and you have freedom and flexibility, it would probably be best to still treat it like it's a job that you have to go to because in that, when you think in that manner, there's certain things you're not going to do. So you're not going to go to your boss and be like, well... I whatever I gotta excuse. take the dog I gotta even take the dog out and walk right. the dog. I had to walk my dog this morning and then I had to wash him and then I had to find a good outfit. You wouldn't tell your boss that stuff. You would just do whatever Some you had to do to do get that. to work. <laughs> well, I no, mean, that's a fact. I yeah. <laughs> but you would just do whatever you had to do to get yeah. the stuff done. And so I mean in that way it's good to kinda try and take some of those ment- mentalities, take some of those like tips and things that you would do there and bring them to your I think it business. ultimately it's about what's important to you yeah. you know what I'm saying as an individual because honestly as much as I would love for everyone here to you know be a part of the family business and it grow 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 at the end of the day if it's not what you want to do it doesn't matter how bad I might want you to be a part of it if it's not what you want then you're not going to do it. It's you're not going to put your all into it. You're going to half behind it and it's going to suck. And that's unfortunate, but that's the reality of it. And I think that in this type of setting, you have to be willing to give people space because we don't own anybody, you know, and, and we don't want anybody to feel like, they have no choice but this and if they choose to make this their only choice that's their choice versus feeling like 
oh, I was forced into this or, oh, I was made to do. I mean, think about the movies that you watch where people have a family business and the kid is feeling like, you know, I don't want to take over the family business. I don't want to feel like I'm forced to do it or whatever. And how, how that dynamic plays out in the movie. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just interesting, but I I think that the main thing is to just give people room to, to be individuals and to, to choose to be a part of it versus feeling like they're being forced to do it. Right. But if, if, if you are that individual and you've chosen to be a part of it, then be a part of it. You know what I mean? Because then you're saying that, yeah, I made a choice, but now I don't even, you know, my, my choice ain't worth nothing. Because then what happens is in those meetings, people don't even want to take your opinion because you're just so flippy floppy. You, you wishy washy. You know what I'm saying? You can't say that you want to do something and then don't do your part. Because that can mess up the family business That can mess up the family dynamic too Because you're literally being wishy-washy So whatever you say that you're going to do Do it And do it to the best of your ability And I think that's one of the keys with working with family Is to be It's the same thing as a normal business Be a person of your word If you say you're going to do something, do that thing And if you're not going to do it Then at least say you're not going to do it So someone else can do it so then it's not just something that just dropped a ball that was dropped because you don't want to drop balls because most people already have preconceived notions about family businesses. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you have to provide that service, that level of service that is better than someone's going to get outside um, with some other corporation or what have you, you know, right. now there are a lot of people who do like family businesses and like working with, you know, smaller smaller businesses because they can have more personal contact with the owner or more personal contact with the person who's working on their project right but you still have to be business minded and be professional like we talked about in a previous episode right so in working with family how do you determine whether you charge them for something that you do or not because this can go both ways, whether you're in business with them, whether they like you share business with them or you're just partnering with both of you all's businesses or just somebody that your family wants to work with you. Because that's still considered working with family. So how do you determine whether or not you charge them for a service or a product? I mean, that's probably something that you would talk through with them. You know what I'm saying? And, and whatever you all agree to is what you agree to, but it, it's about having a conversation and it's about being um, open, open and honest about mm-hmm. what it's going to require of you and then maybe what your expectation is of them. Contracts. Mm-hmm. Make contracts. Well, yeah, I mean, even even if it's little, I mean, you know, just, just agreeing and, and like Rich said previously, being a person of your word, I think that that's something that's that's so key. But for me, like Khadijah RBZ, I'm a meditation and breath work guide. And so that's a service that I provide for clients. However, if someone within the team wants me to guide them through meditation, then they could reach out to me. And for them, I would provide that service. Now, I would provide the service for them because meditation is important. And I think that it would help and it would support them in their everyday work that they do with dynamic works so if anything it's an added benefit for them to come to me for that service anyway the thing is what the expectation and the requirement would be from from the parties involved myself and whoever may be coming to me for the service so i wouldn't charge them for the service no i'm going to give it to them because it's going to help them Right. I just agree with what you were saying, both of all of you, about the just agreeing on both sides because you just can't be reneging on those statements. So, like, we agreed that, okay, I'll give you a website and you're going to give me some socks or whatever. You can't renege later and be like, well, I'm not giving you any socks because this is that or the third. Like, right, the but you said it with a, with a you crispy needed, website. Right. You need it complete. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. And I, I think that's so key. Whatever you agree to, because if it, you, you can't, there's, there's nothing to build on if there's no agreement. Right. You know, you can't build anything worth anything if you don't have agreement. There's power in agreement. 
And with us building uh, Dynamic Works and, you know, even this podcast, right? There had to be agreement that was set in place to be able to do this week to week, you know? And now we're sitting over 200 episodes and literally, you know, it, it's not every week that everybody feels like doing it, you know? But because you are a person of your word, you still come down, you still get on the podcast and you still put your two cents in to the podcast you know what i mean it's like it's agreement you have whatever you've agreed on then you do that until and then if you want to change your part of the agreement then have a conversation don't just start blanking out and you know being mia and can't nobody find you right because how can i trust you or count on you later it was your responsibility to do these things responsibility and trust are two very important things in family business and businesses in general and a lot of just regular relationships but right and but but you know what i think i think that that one thing goes further than even um just family so so when you're talking about you know um charging do you charge you know people in your family for products and services i think that that's the same thing that you use outside of your family too because if there are there, there are certain clients that, you know, want your service or whatever, um, and there's a such thing as bartering, right? You can barter your service with someone, with another business, you know, partner with them, and um, which is increasing their business by the way, increasing yours. You know, though, though, that's something that you can do also. And that's also a way to do like something we could have said in last week's podcast, which is that's a way to market yourself also. You know, it's a little added, added benefit where you can do somebody's website and they'll do your, what we talked about before, floor tiles, right? They might have the mm-hmm. new <laughs> the new floor tiles, right? And you be like, yo, I built your website. You give me some floor tiles. They be like, yeah, bet. I'm self-cleaning floor tiles. You know what I'm saying? Heating cool, you know? I mean, so, so be open in any situation to at least hear what the, the payment can be. Right. Don't only expect it to come via a dollar exchange. Right. Because sometimes you'll be better off using that barter than it is to get the dollar for it. Yep. So that's that, you know, for 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 me, that that's really it, you know, because all of that, all, all of that sums up to responsibility and trust. Like that's that's what all that is. You're trusting that someone's going to do their part. You know, and you're being responsible for your part. There's just no anything with working with family and actually anybody else, no matter what type of business you have, it's the same exact dynamic. But the thing is, there's some people who are willing to take stuff from people who aren't their family that they don't want to take from people that are in their family. So they go to work, they'll deal with their boss, they'll deal with these, you know, um, co-workers and all that who aren't doing their jobs, who aren't, you know, um, holding up their end of the bargain and just whatever, whatever. But then at home, they don't feel it's okay. But at work, they feel it's okay. It's all good. They're still friends with them. They still go eat lunch with them and everything's all hunky dory. But they come home and they're trying to do their family business, but they're not do- okay with that here, which, okay, I get that. Right, but if you're not going to be okay with it here, then don't be okay with it there. Keep up your level of responsibility and your level of trust of people, and always push people and um, to be better. Right, make note of it, and you try to increase yours so you can be the the example of what that looks like. So, anything else, anybody? Disagreements are going to happen. Avoid it. Just move past it or talk through it and yeah. then move past it. Yeah. Keep holding it over their head. Yeah. Definitely. You definitely have to talk through it. That's it. Yeah. So that's what it's like. That's what it's like building a family business. That's what it's like working with family. That's what it's like growing your family business. And that's what it's like managing a family business. So if you know someone who is thinking about starting a family business or someone who has a family business and are just trying to get their, you know, feet underneath them and get up and run, you know, pass this podcast on. Let them know about it. You know, send send it to them. Tell them to subscribe and catch these this this series right here because um, it's benefiting you. So I think it can definitely benefit them. 
And um, let us know if you have any questions or anything. Maybe we can um, talk about it in a future podcast um, about, you know, any questions that you may have or comments or anything related to family business. Yeah. And if you want to start one and, you know, you want to run it past us, I'm okay with doing a consultation. We can talk about it. You know, it's all good. We can do that via email, info. No, that's not the email address. It'd be family, family at teambees.com. Yep, yep, Family yep. at teambees.com. So you can email us and, you know, we'll definitely give you our take on it. If you have some issues going on within your family business, email us. So just leave a rating and review. Tell us how you guys like these past couple um, episodes, these business episodes. If they were good for you, how they working for you, and what you thinking about them. Because we want to know. Refer a friend. <laughs> refer a friend. Let them know. Yeah, definitely refer a friend. So, this week has been great. I think this was a really good, this was really, really good uh, information. Yep. Honestly, I think some things we could take away from it also. For sure, definitely. So, from the coolest family in podcasting. And on the internet, period. Team B's. We We out. out. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Team B's. To keep the show going, partner with us at teambees.com slash partner. We out.